Firstly, I love the fact that it's expressive. It lets me say what I need to say. And that's really important to me. And it lets me say it in lots of different ways. For example, we all know that this little bit of Ruby code is going to output the numbers 0 to 9. Yeah? And sometimes that's how I would write that piece of code. Sometimes it feels right to code like this. Sometimes I'll write it like this. Which is better? Doesn't make any difference. Sometimes it's one way, sometimes it's another way. Or sometimes you can write it like that. Or even like that. <laughs> now, here is the cool thing about Ruby. Like any relationship, it needs a little bit of mystery, a little bit of surprise to keep it fresh. While I was writing that slide, I had IRB open just to make sure I was going to get the, you know, didn't want to mistype something. And I was copying and pasting into my slides. And I suddenly thought, hmm, I wonder if this works. And it does. <laughs> and that's the first time I tried that particular idiom. And it worked. And it just made me feel a little happy. Yeah? Because Ruby had just that one more little surprise for me. And I love that about the language. It's not small and fixed. It keeps growing. The more you use it, the more you learn about it. And I love that because I'm not going to spend my life doing something which is in a small little box. I want something big that I can explore. And Ruby lets me do that. I was, I think I probably gave the first Ruby tutorial in the United States. It was in 2001 at OzCon. And it was in a very small room because they said, what's Ruby? And there were like you know, 20 seats or something. The room was packed, lots of people in. And I was giving my normal Ruby presentation about this and that. And I noticed that Guido Van Rossum, the inventor of Python, was standing in the back. And during my presentation, he kept asking questions. You know, why does it do it this way? You know, that's stupid. Don't do that. Do this. You know. And we got, after the presentation, I went up to him and I sort of started talking. And we got talking about the differences between Python and Ruby. And we were talking about the fact that some people seem to like Python, and some people seem to like Ruby, but there's not very many people that like both. There's people that like, you know, Haskell and Ruby, or OCaml and Python, but there's not many people that like both Ruby and Python. And we decided that you can't really explain why it is, but it's something like this. <laughs> Some people like dogs. Some people like cats. But not many people like both. It's a preference thing. Now, I think people who like Python are the same kind of way as people like you know, one of the other dogs or cats. People like Ruby are the other kind of people. Some people like Python. Some people like Ruby because they give you different things back. Cats, they sit on your lap and they look at you and they pretend they like you. Right? Dogs go running around and you can play with them and all this kind of thing. They're different things they give you. Now, forgive me if I get this wrong. Right? I do this all the time. I try to use Japanese words that I don't know what they mean. But it seems to me that Python is a bit like kata. It's a form, it's a way of doing it. Guido's way. Right? You follow Python, you follow the kata. You try and do it the same every time. And that has a lot of benefits. 
when you're programming. It's great because it means everybody's programs look the same. But I can't do that. I don't like that. I know I've got this one wrong. But I think... <laughs> I love the idea that things are organic, that things are natural, they have a beginning and an end, and it's okay for them to change. And for me, that's a fundamental aspect of Ruby. It's not fixed. It's not, you know, perfect. If you talk to Matson about Ruby, he will tell you that he has put deliberate, um, not mistakes, but ambiguities in there. Because it works the way people's brains work. It thinks the way people think. And for me, this is what makes Ruby special. It's a multi-paradigm language. I don't have to choose one particular style of programming. So, I can write Ruby as an object-oriented programming language. I don't always do this, though. Sometimes, I just write straight procedural code. Start at the top, go down to the bottom. And that's great, because sometimes that's the best way of writing code. Sometimes I can do something the way you do it in, for example, JavaScript, where it's a prototype-based language. I don't use classes at all. I just change the properties on individual objects. And that's a really fun way to program. And sometimes it's a very good way of programming. And finally, some people will tell you that in Ruby, you can write functional programs. Now, I put it in quotes because it's not really a functional programming language. But you can pretend. You can tell your friends, oh yes, I'm using a functional language. <laughs> <laughs> but even so, the simple you know, enumerable is an incredibly useful module. And it gives you many of the benefits you would get in just being able to manipulate lists you know, via lambdas, via procs. It's great. What else do I like about Ruby? I like the fact that Ruby makes me look good. It makes me productive. I can write a whole lot of code and get things done in Ruby. Now, how does that work? Well, there have been a whole lot of studies about programmer productivity. And the thing that they have found, well, they found two things. Firstly, they found that different programmers have different productivities. Some programmers can write 10 lines of code a day. Some programmers can write 500 lines of code a day. It depends on the programmer. But what they've also found is that for one particular programmer, it doesn't matter much which language they can use they will write the same number of lines of code in any language. So let's imagine that you can write 50,000 lines of code a year. You could write 50,000 lines of assembler, or 50,000 lines of C, or 50,000 lines of Java, or 50,000 lines of Ruby. Where are you going to get the most work done? With Ruby, right? So, using Ruby like this makes me feel good because I'm doing something. And that's the reason I program. The reason I program is not that I like solving problems. It's that I like seeing people use what I've done. I like people playing with my code. I like writing an application and watching people use it. So the quicker I can get an application in front of somebody, the better. The quicker I get to see them use it. The quicker I've given someone something valuable. So I like that about Ruby. The productivity makes me feel good. and makes them feel good too. <laughs>